Fort Pulaski on Cockspur Island, defending the city of Savannah, Georgia from seaborne attack. During the Civil War, it was besieged and breached in what became a turning point in military history. Fort Pulaski was built as part of the third system of coastal fortifications following the War of 1812. Work on this historic Civil War fort began in 1829 and was completed in 1847. Fort Pulaski has a pentagonal shape with two walls on the eastern side of the fort. This shape allowed defensive fire from two fort walls on both the north and south channels of the Savannah River. The brick walls of Fort Pulaski are more than seven feet thick and 22 feet high. The west curtain of the fort contains the entrance, which is protected by a demi-lune. The whole structure is surrounded by a moat about eight feet deep. After its completion in 1847, Fort Pulaski sat neglected. It wasn't until the Civil War that the fort would receive a full garrison. On December 20th of 1860, South Carolina seceded from the Union. Shortly after, in the first days of January 1861, a volunteer regiment from Georgia seized control of Fort Pulaski from the United States government. On January 19th, Georgia also seceded from the Union. For the next several months, the neglected fort would be repaired and stocked with gunpowder, cannons, and food. In mid-1861, Union ships began to arrive at the mouth of the Savannah River. Several Confederate ships made it through with military supplies, but as the year continued, the Union forces tightened their blockade. By late February of 1862, the Federal troops had effectively cut off Confederate access to the Savannah River. They began establishing batteries on Tybee Island, preparing to lay siege to Fort Pulaski. This work was performed under the cover of night and lasted more than two months. On the morning of April 10, 1862, the brush hiding the 11 Union batteries was removed. The siege was about to begin. The Confederate forces were given the opportunity to surrender, but chose to defend the fort. Fort Pulaski was thought to be impregnable. Ground forces could not reach it, and it was thought to be too far away for the artillery to be effective. The smooth bore cannons commonly used at the time needed to be within a thousand yards firing distance to be effective against the brick masonry walls. The Union positions on Tybee Island were further than a thousand yards. The U.S. Chief of Engineers, General Totten, once said of the fort, you might as well bombard the Rocky Mountains. At 8.15 a.m., the Union cannons began to fire. The fire from both sides was sporadic and wild as they dialed in their targets. After a few hours, the Union guns found their mark and began taking effect. The Union forces employed a new innovation in cannon technology, rifled barrels. These rifled cannons could fire a projectile with much greater accuracy over a greater distance than their smoothbore predecessors. The rifled cannons and Columbiad guns took their toll on Fort Pulaski. At the end of the first day of bombardment, the fort lost several guns in the casemates, most of the guns on the parapets, and the wall had been breached at the southeast angle. Throughout the night, the Union Army kept a slow fire on the fort and resumed again with fury on the morning of April 11, 1862. The rifled cannons penetrated ever deeper into the brick walls. By noon, three casemate arches were open. The Union cannons were quickly peeling away the southeast wall. By the early afternoon, cannon shells were passing through the breach in the fort walls and landing near the magazine. Colonel Olmsted knew it was only a matter of time before a Union shell ignited the powder store and exploded the entire fort. Confederate fire ceased and the white flag was raised. 
the Confederate troops surrendered and the United States reclaimed Fort Pulaski. The port of Savannah was closed off. The siege of Fort Pulaski lasted only 30 hours, but military history was changed forever. The reduction of the fort by rifled cannons had rendered masonry forts obsolete. The defeat of Fort Pulaski has become its most enduring legacy. If you want to see more things like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, head over to my website where you can purchase my newest documentary.